All right, guys, welcome back. So today's gonna be something definitely different than what we're normally used to seeing on my channel. So last Sunday night at church, my pastor, he challenged us as a church as a whole to commit to teaching one Bible study per week to someone. Well, I have a platform of over 106,000 people to teach a Bible study to. So I'm thankful for that. So over the next 12 weeks, I'm gonna be doing a Bible study, one Bible study a week. I was really planning on doing like a monthly thing, but it looks like God had some other things for me. Guys, I've been doing a lot of praying, a lot of fasting, because there are things in my life I know that I need God to do. I need him to take over. I need him to just completely make miracles happen. If y'all only knew the things that I am facing, um, but God is faithful. so. I am thankful for that and no telling what you guys are facing as well. So I want to give y'all a message today about the three greatest words in life and how to activate the power of God. So uh, let's just go with this. Let's go with it. So we're going to start off with Acts 21, 10 through 14. Oh, and by the way, the first time I did this, I took my hat off, I put a suit coat on, I wear suits and stuff to church, but I just did not feel comfortable for whatever reason. I felt very uncomfortable giving the message last time, so I said, this time, let's do something comfortable. I, I don't really know how I feel about wearing a hat while preaching a message or whatever, but this is what I feel comfortable in. This is you know, what y'all are used to seeing me in, and just I feel more energy now. I feel a lot more comfortable talking about all this and what I'm wearing right now for whatever reason. But let's get into this. This is going to be Acts 21, chap uh, chapter 21, verses 10 through 14. And as we tarried there many days, there came down from Judea a certain prophet named Agabus. And when he was coming to us, he took Paul's girdle and bound his own hand and feet. And thus saith the Holy Ghost, so shall the Jews of Jerusalem bind the man that owneth this girdle and shall deliver him into the hands of the Gentiles. And when we heard these things, we both, both we and they of that place besought him not to go up to Jerusalem. When Paul answered, What mean ye to weep and break mine heart? For I am ready not to be bound only, but also to die at Jerusalem for the name of the Lord Jesus. And when he would not be persuaded, we ceased saying, The will of the Lord be done. Okay, so here's something huge, guys. People's opinion can stop the word of God in your life. Think about that. God gives you a word, but somebody else doesn't like it. You can miss the will of God for your life just because somebody doesn't like that. If they put that impression upon you and you let that get to them, that, oh, I don't like this. I think that's wrong. No, no, no. God gave you a word. You stick with the word he gave you, okay? So let's go to Romans 8. Let's go to Romans 8 and 32. We got a little bit more scripture before we really dive too deep in this. Uh, as I feel the Holy Ghost right now. Um, Romans 8, 32. Why is this not scrolling down for me? Wait, Romans 8. I'm sorry. I'm looking for chapter 32. I'm like, no, there's chapter 8. <laughs> I'm just so ex I'm, I'm excited right now. I'm, okay, so let's go. Romans 8, chapter 8, verse 32. And we're going to read all the way through 39. He that spareth not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? Is it God that justifieth? Who is he that condemneth? Is it Christ that died? Yea, rather, that is risen again who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us, who shall separate us from the love of Jesus Christ, shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword. As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long, we are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, 
which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Okay, so again, this Bible study is going to be titled Life's Three Greatest Words, all right? Every teacher, every parent, every counselor, every lawyer, every salesman, etc., is trying to do this with whatever they're trying to offer. God is love is not life's three greatest words. Even though those are good words, it's not the greatest words. Able to heal? No. Able to save is not either. When life decides to run you over, you need to get up and get these words in your mouth. The three greatest words in life are I am persuaded. Okay? I am persuaded that God is able. I am persuaded that Jesus is Lord. I am persuaded that nothing can separate me from the love of Jesus. That's literally what we were just reading. He says, For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor to come, nor height, death, uh, anything can shall be able to separate us from the love of God. So, guys, y'all see this revelation, right? All you need to do is wake up one day and say, Come hell or high water, I'm persuaded that God is for me, and that if God is for me, it doesn't matter who comes against me, because greater is he that is within me than he who is in the world, okay? So, guys, I can walk through hell with these three words. Listen, 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 because it doesn't matter what may come my way, because when I fall, not if I fall, I shall arise, and when I am in darkness, the Lord shall be my light because I am persuaded, and if I am persuaded, I am unbeatable, and so are you. Something's got to get in your spirit, because things are going to come into your life. You will fall, trouble will come your way, there will be chaos in your life. But you have to say, I don't care what goes on, I am persuaded. Listen to this, guys. The truth itself won't do anything for you. Listen, listen closely. We take this truth that God gave us out into this world. We take it to the lost, but the truth itself doesn't liberate anybody. Let's read this verse. Let's go to John 8 and 32, and you will know exactly what I'm saying. You're like, what? The truth doesn't do anything? Just listen, listen, listen. So, 8 and 32. Okay. So... And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Okay, so there it is. The truth doesn't do anything. You knowing the truth does it. The truth isn't absolute, and it is eternal. But it doesn't go one way or the other. It is just the truth, all right? But when you persuade somebody, yes, keyword persuade someone, about the truth, then it explodes. Then it becomes dynamic. It liberates, it heals. It's the persuasion that makes the truth work. Guys, you see where this is all going. I'm gonna do what God told me to do. And God is going to do what he promised. If I do what God told me to do, then I am persuaded that God is going to do what he said he would do. The whole issue is as simple as being persuaded. You have to get it in your head that I am persuaded that God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in you. There will be time when hell stands up against you and says, I'm about to take you out. You have to say, shut up, you fool. You need to go pick on someone that you can take out because you can't take me out because I am persuaded. I'm persuaded that I have a destiny, that I have a call, that I have an anointing, that I have a power from another world, that I have a mission to do for God because I am persuaded. When you get that persuasion down in your soul, guys, there's nothing turning you around. Nothing can defeat you. Okay, so listen to this. I am persuaded that Satan can't do anything to you. Yes, he wants to tell you that he can harm you, but he cannot do anything to you unless you agree with him. But I'm also persuaded that God can't do anything to you in your life unless you agree with him as well. If God tells you something and you don't have faith, you're not agreeing with him. You see where I'm getting at? 
Isn't it funny how some people will agree with a word the doctor gives them? But when God gives them a word, they have doubt? What, what, what kind of faith do we have? That's not persuasion. And that's because they're not persuaded. You must be persuaded that let God be true in every man a lie, guys. So the king told Daniel, you pray to another God besides me and you're going to the lion's den. The king also told Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, if you don't bow to me, you're going in the fiery furnace. Goliath also told David that he was going to kill him. But these men were persuaded. Daniel was persuaded that God would shut the mouths of the lions, so he kept praying to God. The three Hebrew boys were persuaded that God wouldn't let them burn. So when they played the music again and the king said bow, they didn't bow. They did not give in. They stood up to the tyrannical king. And David was persuaded that if God gave me the strength to defeat the lion and the bear, surely God will give me the strength to defeat the uncircumcised Philistine. And you know what? <laughs> Guys, David took the head off Goliath. I know y'all know that. All you have to do, guys, is say, I am persuaded. You don't have to know the nuclear formula to activate the power of God in your life. All you have to say is, am I persuaded or am I not persuaded? Do you believe that prayer works or it don't work? Do you believe in fasting or are you not going to fast? Do you believe in sacrifice or are you not going to sacrifice? Guys, it's so simple. It's so simple that even a college degree doctor with so many more degrees than a thermometer could understand this, guys. It don't take a rocket science scientist. You have to keep these three words ringing in your soul. I am persuaded. If I give myself to God, he will back me up. He will bless me. He will anoint me. He will use me. It's not about feeling. It's just, I am persuaded. It has nothing to do with feeling. It's about your persuasion, guys. So, Christianity is the result of God being persuaded. He looked down and said, I'm persuaded that you are worth dying for. I know you're trash, but I'm persuaded that I can make you treasure. I know you are dirt, but, I'm but I specialize in dust and dirt. What God make us out of? The dust of the earth? He took the dust of the earth and made Adam, guys. Come on. God says, I realize you don't have anything to offer, but I have everything to offer. I'm just persuaded that you are worth dying for. You know why Jesus went to Calvary? First, he was persuaded that, he, that his dying would shed blood that was powerful enough to forgive the worst person. So that doesn't mean that what that means, guys, is it don't matter what you've done. It seriously doesn't matter. The blood that Jesus shed on Calvary was powerful enough to forgive the worst person. And then he was persuaded that death wasn't powerful enough to hold him in the grave. That's why three days later, the stone was rolled away, away the, the grave clothes were empty. He wasn't there. He was not there. He said, destroy this temple and in three days I'm going to raise it back. That's just what I said. I am persuaded that I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. If God is persuaded, why don't you get persuaded? The three greatest words in life are I am persuaded. It's not God is love, but I am persuaded that God loves me. It's not about God is able to heal but I am persuaded God is able to heal me. Guys, if there's anything you get out of this message, it's that God wants you to walk away from this video with an innate persuasion, something that nobody can turn you around from. You must be persuaded, guys, that Jesus is everything, that he is Lord, that he can do anything that you ask of him. If you want to activate the power of God, you must be persuaded in his power, all right? So guys, thank y'all so much for listening to this Bible study. I feel that went very well. So Jesus, thank you for this message that you have given us. I pray that it really affects some people in very positive ways. So we'll be back again next week with another one, guys. So thanks for watching and God bless you.